Hello and welcome to the CalPets Data Discrepancies Functionality Training. Today we will explore the navigation, user interface, extracts, and system processing implemented as part of the data discrepancies rollout. This training is part of the basic series of courses designed to help users become familiar with CalPets functionality. So let's discuss the objectives for today's training. First, we would like to familiarize system users with functionality and the nuances of the data discrepancy user interface. Secondly, we want to help manage expectations as new functionality always presents challenges and learning curves. Finally, at the end of today's training, you should have the ability to resolve errors efficiently during the submission window prior to snapshot processing using the DD functionality or the data discrepancy functionality. Looking at the agenda for today's training, we can see that we are going to begin with an overview and then move on to a demonstration of the data discrepancy UI. Finally, we will conclude with a wrap up summarizing key points, identifying resources, and looking forward to what's next as far as training. Okay, so now we're ready for the overview. Uh, we will have a brief discussion, uh, offer some background, look at the workflow, and talk about account access. All right, central to understanding functionality is understanding the reason for, or in this case, what is a data discrepancy. As described in CalPads flash message number 223 back in June of 2022, CalPads error logic was changed to trigger on data after post or posting rather than prior to post. These are now called data discrepancies. Data discrepancies are errors that trigger on records posted in CalPads. These are not submission errors that reject batch files or online transactions. Data discrepancies may be fatal or warnings. Data discrepancies are triggered due to changes in data and are not subject to snapshot or overnight processing. Unresolved data discrepancies will become certification data discrepancies or CDDs. These are listed on the snapshot detail screen and you may be familiar with them already. Now let's look at the data submission workflow. Beginning with the batch file submission, going into the CalPets portal, the file may pass or be rejected, right? So there still are input validations that you have to contend with even though DDs are being implemented. For those files that pass those input validations, the data is automatically posted to CalPads ODS. Once data is in CalPads, ODS reports and extracts are available, real-time anomaly detection occurs, and if there are errors in the data, data discrepancy processing will identify those errors. Now, going back to data discrepancy UI and the functionality, you now have visibility to the errors in your data prior to snapshot processing. Now, when snapshot processing is available during the submission cycle, you have access to snapshot reports, certification validations, or those cert errors, as well as CDDs, certification data discrepancies. The unresolved fatal DDs, those fatal data discrepancies that were not resolved before the snapshot processing, will also be visible on the certification detail screen. These are the CDDs. CDDs and cert errors must be resolved prior to certification. So that's a brief summary of the data submission workflow. All right, so data discrepancies um, are supported in your documentation and they are currently supported and will be when the functionality rolls out. Here we have the traditional error list that you can find on the CalPass system documents uh, page. And if you look at the top, you see details about the error. If it has an X, it's positively identified as a data discrepancy. If you have uh, filtered for fatal, these will be CDDs that you will see. Okay. Now, normally you're going to have a discrepancy in CalPads be identified by the error number come here. So you will already know that it's a CDD. But if you're doing any planning ahead of time, if you want to see what you potentially may contend with, this is uh, a way to filter using the CalPads error list to identify uh, DDs 
all those with an X, or CDDs, those that would be fatal instead of warnings. Okay, so here we have the CalPads error list. Under help, you can come to troubleshooting and land on this page. You can see from here, you can download the traditional error list that we just viewed. Now your input validations and your uh, data discrepancies will have a prefix for the record type, SENR, SINF, SPRG, and so on. As you're troubleshooting, uh, doing your CalPads work, uh, you may come across a error. You click it, and you have the same elements that you would in the Excel spreadsheet um, and the indication if it's a data discrepancy or not. So as far as the SENR0557, you can see with the information presented that it's not a fatal DD, but it's a warning. You know, you're working on your DDs or if you're trying to plan ahead, either the CalPads error list or the troubleshooting section in the CalPads user manual can help you. Now let's discuss user roles. So the edit role is needed to access data discrepancies. And we will show you how the functionality works with regards or respect to these roles or lack of roles during the demonstration of the UI user interface. But here we have basically system users that may not be LEA data coordinators. So you have your SEDS data coordinator, your student language uh, coordinator, and you're someone who's working in nutrition services, possibly pulling data from CalPads or uh, submitting FRMP records, okay? So when we look at the SEDS data coordinator, we know they do most of their work in your student special education system. They should already have the SPED edit role, right? That will give them access and the ability to resolve DDs if need be using the DD user interface. Of course, they would need the SPED view role as well. Uh, this role gives you access uh, to the container in the student detail screen. And so to, you know, as you're working and making changes, uh, you need to identify the DD, look at the details, but you also need access to the special education record uh, on the student detail screen. That's the SPED view role. So the DDs come from the edit. That's why it's highlighted in um, here. They probably would also need student search to be able to look up SSIDs, uh, be able to make enroll comparisons to enrollment. So you have SENR view. Uh, perhaps the student information for demographics. Uh, and then, of course, the fall one reports role and any year four reports role. It's possible that your special ed data coordinator needs other roles as well when you think about end of year three. Um, but we had limited real estate. So this is just a sample. The emphasis is they need the SPED edit role to access and resolve DDs. So when you think about those uh, student language coordinators, right, they definitely need the CELA or CELA edit role, right? They need to be able to look at the errors, these DDs that the CELA records trigger. They need the view role again to access the information on the student detail screen, as well as the student information and enrollment. And then consider they also would need the uh, program edit role. And that's because some of the language instruction programs or the lit programs under their purview uh, would not show up without the SPRG edit role. So, and then again, the SPRG or SPRG view role to see records on the student detail screen. And of course, student search to search for SSIDs. Again, they may need more roles like fall one, fall two reports role, so on and so forth. Again, we have limited real estate, but the emphasis is on CELA edit and SPRG edit to be able to resolve and uh, review uh, the DDs. And then when we look at a different type of account, a nutrition services account, we would know that they need the SPRIG edit role, right? To look at program records, specifically NSLP programs. So need the, they need the FRMP edit role as well, uh, possibly uh, to do their work in totality, direct certification role, the FRMP view role, uh, enrollment and SINF view. Um, so, you know, these are things to consider uh, if you're adding accounts. The good things with DD functionality, existing accounts usually already have the roles needed to access the DDs already. If you can submit data and post it, you also will have access to DDs, okay? So coming back to the CalPads user manual, 
Um, if you need information about roles, if you're trying to go to uh, functionality map, user management, user roles. And so the user roles that give access to DDs are the edit roles. As you can see, when we use SENR edit as an example, the key here is request and retrieve extracts, request and retrieve SSID enrollment rejected records, right? And so this role description precedes the implementation of DDs. So although DDs are not rejected records, they are errors that trigger and you need the edit role to resolve those. So pretty much that DD functionality would fall in line with the privileges granted by the edit role here.